Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card. Um, I think last time I made a similar card I called it something like inside block card. I'm not sure, um, but this is what happens to it. Okay, so what I did was I did that design and that design, but that one I had to do on a much smaller piece of cardstock so that I could cut it up so it fitted on there. I, I'm just really pleased how this one has turned out. Um, this is my card, it's my measurements and everything. I dare say there is one on YouTube somewhere. Um, I didn't find it. Um, but as I say, that's my measurements. This is the one I did before that and I'm really pleased with it except I wasn't so happy with the size of the blocks and the gap in between. I don't know which one you prefer. I definitely prefer the bigger blocks. I think you, because you get more of the picture there, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do this card, but with this design, okay, this color scheme. So I'm going to start off by telling you, oh, by the way, if you're thinking you've seen me do something similar to that before, I have. And it was this, and when you open this one up, it's got the blocks, but the difference is this one is cut here, okay? Whereas this one, they are actual blocks. So it's solid at the back, whereas you've got that at the back of this one. That one's solid. And I have to say, I do prefer them when they look like this. Apart from anything else, they're a lot easier to make as well. So this is what we're going to be doing. Let me tell you the cardstock pieces you're going to be needing. So first of all, you need a piece of Mango Melody, which measures six inches by 10 and a half inches. All the measurements will be in the box below, including inches and metric. And this, um, these measurements will also be suitable for um, letter size cardstock users because the finished size is about six by three and a half, I think. Um, for me, I would probably use a seven by five card, um, a seven by five envelope to pop this in, um, because I'm not sure it would actually go into our envelopes. Um, let me just check that. Right, this is um, the, UK size. Oh, the UK one goes into our small envelopes. That's good. So this is the American size. No, it's a tad small. So if you wanted to do it for this size, you would have to um, recalculate the measurements of your piece that you need for your image and all of that. Personally, after what I've been through working all this out, <laughs> I really recommend that you just buy a larger or make a larger envelope if you've got um, an punch, uh, envelope punch board. So anyway, let me continue. We have four pieces for the blocks and these measure six inches by one and a quarter inches. You need one piece of designer series paper and this is from Flowering Fields and this measures three and three eighths inches by five and seven eighths inches. Then you need two for the inside and these measure one and seven eighths inches by five and seven eighths inches. You also need, now obviously because there's a lot of painting doing those images, I've done both of mine beforehand. So the one that you need for the front of the card this should measure three inches by five and a half inches because that one I've got room for the sentiment here. And the small one, which is going to be cut precisely to fit the blocks, this measures two and three quarter inches by four and a half inches. Um, you'll need a scrap for a couple of butterflies. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I coloured mine to get the variegated colour there. Okay, 
um, but obviously I've had to do all that beforehand. Um, is that all I need to explain? Oh no, one other thing I want to explain to you before. Um, if you've been with me during the pandemic, during the lockdowns, what have you, you'll recognise my fingernails. And I am back wearing my pandemic fingernails because unfortunately Sharon has gone down with Covid. Um, so I, she wasn't able to do my nails last week. So I've gone back to using these. I've been in touch with Sharon. Um, she's not feeling massively better and she is still positive. So um, sending her my love and my prayers and everything so she gets better soon. Unfortunately for Sharon, because it's her own business, um, she doesn't earn any money. So um, it's really, really a uh, big, big shame for her and everybody like her. Right. Um, too much talking. Let me tell you what we're going to do with these. I have already done mine, but I'm going to go through the process with you. You need your trimmer, and this needs to be um, scored at three and a half inches, and either seven inches, or turn it around to three and a half inches the other side which is what I find easiest to do especially when I'm videoing because I've got the tripod standing by the side of me and opening this up it's a bit of a trial now these four pieces you need to do them all the same and they all need to be scored at one and a half inches three inches all these measurements will be in the box below and four and a half inches. Okay, so that's all you need your trimmer for. Now it really is just a question of, oh no, we will need the trimmer to cut up for the blocks, our image. But that's not for a while yet. So first of all, I'm going to start by finding a foam folder. And did I actually do this? Yes, I did could hardly see it. So I'm going to fold these one forward and one backwards. Just make sure that they line up nicely here. I have to say it does feel funny wearing these fingernails again. Part of the reason for telling you that these are uh, false fingernails is in case I have the embarrassing event of one popping off. Um, if you know about it then we can laugh about it together. So there we go, that's the folds for that one. And this one, these all need to be folded as well. And when you fold these, make sure that they are lining up on both sides and not going off on a tangent. In fact, I could have done these ahead of time as well, couldn't I? Never mind. A lot of my morning has been taken up with uh, my fingernails. And I have to say, Hubby's been very good. He's stuck them on for me. With these, I mean, they are really the typical old-fashioned stick-on fingernails. Um, and they come with a tiny bottle of glue. And the bottle of glue is so narrow, I can't squeeze it. It's too hard for me. So I do all the preparation work and sorting the nails out. And Hubby does the squirting the glue out for me, bless him. So, I think it was Mango Melody that I said to you recently, um, when I was, I think it's the other side of this, wasn't it? Yes, I was using that design and um, I said, at the beginning I don't really like Mango Melody but since I've started using that designer series paper um, I'm really quite fond of it now if like that you find one's not lined up properly um, you might need to apply a bit of pressure on it um, no that's not right that's right okay Right, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to put these two pieces on. Now what I did with this, once I had 
coloured it all and I stamped the sentiment on. Let me tell you what uh, stamp sets I've been using here. The image is from this one here, it's Blessings of Home. This is a complete suite, it's beautiful, really beautiful. Um, if you haven't seen it, do check out the catalogue for that. That's in the spring summer catalogue. And the sentiment is from Flowering Tulips. No one deserves a happier birthday than you, which I think is a really lovely sentiment. So let me just... Yeah, my fingernails don't feel very secure at all at the moment. I'll get used to it, I'm sure. Let me turn that round. And of course I've got to try and pick things up and everything with it. Uh, no, I don't want you there. Let's use this first. I'm going to use Tombow. You, you, you can use whichever adhesive you prefer to use. I like Tombow because struggling with straight lines, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Now when this fits onto this sheet, there's quite a big gap all around. And then when this one fits onto the front, there's very little gap. What happened was, when I was working out all the measurements, I finished up where I had to leave a one-eighth of an inch gap at the top and bottom, above and below the blocks, which meant I had an eighth of an inch gap, so I wanted an eighth of an inch just to continue it, because when the card opens up, it's all one long card. just show you what I mean there. On this one the blocks are just an eighth of an inch down so that it should have followed along there. That's what the plan is. But it's still got the gap up there. These ones I started right at the top. Okay so it didn't really matter what size I had on these ones. But again you know it's your choice. Now we're going to put the boxes on and um, what I do with this is I take a pencil, I think that's my sharp one, yep. Now this is three and a half inches and the box, each of these was one and a half inches which means I've got two inches here for my designer series paper. Now I draw pencil marks on here to make my life much easier and you may find that it is also an idea to have handy a punch. Any punch would do is just to be used as a weight. So what we need to do is first of all measure one eighth of an inch down here and one of eighth one eighth of an inch down here. And then, what did I do? Did I join them up? I've had a night's sleep since I did this. No, I couldn't have done. I know. This is what I used. No, I, I know what I did. I remember. I got it. What I did was I measured two inches out and two inches out there and then two inches over from here both measurements are going from this fold line two inches there and two inches there now I'm going to use my T-Vert ruler let's turn it up the other way it's easier and I am going to join those two marks very gently. Now the reason I'm doing them at two inches is because they're still going to be visible once the boxes are in place therefore it's going to be easy to remove these marks. Most of them are going to disappear anyway because um, 
this is all going to be covered up it's only that little bit at the end there that will still be visible right okay so what we need to do take one box and have it so you've got all your mounting folds upwards and you're going to put Tombow on that no you're not you've got to draw lines on here first haven't you right start your ruler at your one eighth of an inch there and then you mark let me just double check that so you mark down at one and a quarter okay so that should fit that yep and then you mark down at quarter of an inch and then you mark down at one and a quarter and a quarter of an inch one and a quarter quarter of an inch and that should be one and a quarter which it is okay now I'm going to do the same on this side I didn't line up my do my one eighths did I okay so that's my one eighths so I start at my one eighths and I'm going to mark one quarter uh, sorry one and a quarter one quarter one and a quarter one quarter one and a quarter quarter and one and a quarter yes with the eighth right let's start that again then let's go back to this we want one side that's facing up now I'm going to put my punch on there just to try and help keep this down right now with that one what you need to do that there has got to fit in between that line and that line and it's got to go up to the edge there okay so I'm going to put that there line those two up now I need to close that to make sure I've got that right into the fold but still allowing that to close and then I make sure on my grid paper my card is lined up nice and straight and therefore I can make sure that I've laid this on straight as well okay so that's good I'll take another one again mountain folds up the top Now this time it's going to line up with those two there because that's going to be my quarter inch gap. That's going to be my quarter inch gap. I'm going up to the centre fold there. That's that. There we go. make sure my cards lined up bring that over make sure that's straight yes yeah, that looks straight with that line there I wonder how many of you don't use grid paper when you're working how do you cope with jobs like this or is it just me that I struggle with my straight lines I think this is a brilliant um, item in the craft room Right, this is number three, again, going to line up with those lines. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to close it just to make sure. It will push it out of the way if you've gone, um, if you're not close, if you've gone too far rather. 
Right, let's line this up. Right, that's straight. That's straight. And that's straight. Okay, can you see the lines there? But that is really beautiful. Beautifully straight. My last one. I would recommend that you use um, Tombow for this. Right, lining up with my last two marks here. Um, I'm, I don't use now myself, so I don't know exactly how strong that is. I know the people who do use it are really very pleased with it. Right, let's have a look. Is that straight? Yes. If you do this and you find, oh no, that's not straight, because it's Tombow, you can just pull it and move it into the right place. I hope I didn't move that. Okay. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Right, now what you need to do is fold these in half. Okay, so you've got two squares up on each of these. Now, did I do them all separately or did I? Oh no, I didn't, did I? Okay. Right, now you need to put glue on all of these. They should all be lined up beautifully. Am I still on the screen? Yep. Crikey, for where I'm sitting, when I looked up to the screen on my camcorder, this cardstock looks really orange. Really orange as in like an orange orange. I hope that's just distortion because I'm looking at it from further down. There we go. And once you've done all of that, just bring this one over and close it down. Okay, easy as that. Worth the effort doing those lines, isn't it? The marks, you've only got to do half of it and you're okay, you're done, sorted. Now the only thing is this does take a little while to um, adhere. So before we move on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top of it and I'm going to move it out of the way and I am going to cut this and I am going to show you how I painted my butterflies okay so let's put those somewhere safe um, now is this the sheet that I've got it right okay uh, I don't think that'll be in the way will it okay so you need your trimmer and the first thing you need to do is having this portrait across here you need to cut it at one and three eighths this is two and three quarters across so one and three eighths is half so that's one and three eighths and to prove it it should line up with one and three eighths on that side which it does yep right, where are you one and three eighths okay and I always like to make sure when I'm doing bits like this that this gap here is the same I love it when my paper comes down here so that I can check my measurement down there right okay so that's that I'm going to leave that one there now each of these need to be cut into one and one eighth block, one and one eighth inches blocks. Now, whichever one you start cutting first, for example, if you cut the top one first, make sure you cut the top one of the other one first as well. Just in case your four one and one eighth inches isn't quite um, spot on, 
then hopefully you'd be out on both the bottom pieces if that makes sense also if your piece of paper isn't quite the right length it'll be the bottom pieces that are slightly longer slightly shorter okay so I'm going to start by cutting my top ones first which means I'll do that one first as well when I get to it now this needs to be one and one eighths Oh, I know what I said, I would turn it around that way because it's easier to hold if you line up that side. Okay, so that's one on one eighths. Then one on one eighths. And one and one eighth. So this should line up one and one eighth on both sides. If you find your piece keeps moving, you can put a piece of post it note down to hold that. Okay, so that's those four pieces. Now I cut the top end first, and I'm cutting that side, so I'm going to do that one first. This is the more difficult one. Oops, that moved. I think it's still all right. Make sure there is one and one eighth mark. Okay, so it's just before the three if it moves. Okay. So there's that, so we don't need this anymore. The colours I've used on here, I've used So Saffron, in fact let me show you on the card front because that would be better. That's So Saffron, is that the right way, that one and that one. That's Melon, no, Mango Melody which is a retired colour. And on the outside I used light pale papaya and dark pale papaya on the inside there and this is shaded spruce for the uh, leaves right I'm going to leave that there for a moment let's just finish off this one what you need to do now is to open this up and press that down now I always find turn it upside down this side is not quite correct so what I do is I go over it with my bone folder. Okay, make sure you're holding these ones down and then just go over these. Okay, so then when you open your card, it opens beautifully. Okay, and the gap between those is just amazing, really amazing. So let me just use my eraser to get rid of these marks. You don't need to bother about the ones at the uh, in the middle there, really. When we put our layers on, that's all going to disappear. Made a bit of a mess there, haven't I? Wonder why that happened. Good job it's being covered. Okay, so we're going to put these pieces on now. You can 
start top bottom whichever I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up bad habit leaving the Tombow without the um, lid on it This is another thing about like about Tombow as well. I can get two pieces glued up. And as long as I don't stop to answer the phone or something, I can do them both at the same time. Oh yes, and I know another tip for you. When you're doing this, it's very difficult to see where the block starts and the underneath. ends so let me this is a disadvantage of gluing two at the same time if you get sidetracked okay which happens to me regularly um right so what do we do i should have brought something over because i can't see anything to use um bear with me just get a piece of white to go underneath and it's quite easy to line up so that you can see that you're getting your little gap there right let's carry on If you didn't want to do a design where like I've done this one on here and cut into blocks you could always put letters on here like um, if somebody's having a new baby put baby girl assuming it's a girl could put baby boy with a something down there or you could put with love or love you with a heart in the fourth box on this side or you could do different sentiments quite a lot of things that you can do I just fancied this idea of having a picture like that that's been cut up I'm sure that when the recipient gets this they would automatically be drawn to say oh is that that and then they'll start comparing the two. I'm sure they will. Do you, do you agree? I'm sure I would. If that was not the effect that I wanted, then I would have coloured this one on the blocks in totally different colours. I probably hope they didn't notice that I'd used the same design twice. <laughs> uh, it's been fun working this one out. It has been hard work. Um, but I think it's worth it. I have found that these, the images, the two images on this stamp set a really lovely for colouring, really lovely. I think, I can't think, well, what card did I do last week? Um, I've got an idea I used, oh no, it was the Easter card, wasn't it? That I'd used the other image for, and I said I really liked the bigger one, and it won't be long before I use it. And that was perfectly correct, because I've used it now. we go. Yep, 
Yes, I'm pleased with that. I do like that. Right, now, what I did find also, that these two were uh, folded a lot better after um, leaving them overnight under heavy weights. Um, they just, I don't know whether it's because these are blocks and therefore got the extra layer, makes it feel really quite chunky. Um, but a night under a heavy weight did them the world of good. Right, I'm going to pop these on here now. Now the other idea I had about this was what you could do if you wanted is to make this piece the same size as this one here actually, so that it went underneath the blocks. So you would see the design coming through here, although you'd have the cardstock strip going down there like this one. Um, it was just a thought. I decided no, I didn't want to do that. Um, but you might think it's a better idea to use it all. I must remember I haven't done the butterflies yet. I feel that I've jumped about a bit with this card. But it is better if when you open it, the box is out and you flatten it down. It is better if you've given it quite a good chance to adhere. Right, I'm going to turn this upside down to do this one. Now, what I'm going to... Turn that upside down as well. Yep. Um, I'm going to get my eighths of an inch all the way around here. And then this might or might not have to slip underneath there. Okay, so that's an eighth, an eighth, an eighth. That's the only one that needed a bit of encouragement, otherwise the others are all okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do this one. And the same thing may happen as well. I just didn't want to leave too much of an orange gap there because there's obviously an orange gap here. Right, now I'm going to do my one eighth around this side now. Like my other one, it was only that side that needed tucking under. Okay, so that's that. It's really lovely. Um, so what I need now is my butterflies. So the colours I'm using for these are another tip for you as well when I'm colouring anything like those I use these I get a piece of um, cardstock and I just do my colours on there to see what they look like whether I think they all look as if they go together that's the one I used for this card where's my one that I did oh no the one for the butterflies I did um, actually on my um, grid paper so what I did was I started with light Calypso Coral Now there's no really right or wrong on this at all I just judge an area going around the outsides the top and bottom about right and then the next colour I did was this one which is dark pale dark pale <laughs> papaya 
Okay, so then I did about the same again, another panel. And then on that side. And then I used the yellow, which is dark so saffron. And I went over the bit that was still white without going over his body. And then I went over the pale papaya, no, dark papaya, dark pale papaya. And just coloured them in. And the colours just seemed to blend together so beautifully. Okay, let's do this one. See this one's still wet. In fact, let me just colour the body as well. I use dark smoky slate for that. Yep. I try not to colour the eyes in. Okay, so that's pretty close, isn't it? I think this one probably looks darker because it's still wet. And you can see that I've used uh, Wink Stella on the one previous. Okay, so let me just quickly do the Wink of Stella. There we go. Stamping Up have just announced a new event they're doing for demonstrators and it's a four hour crafting session. It'll be on a, um, not really Zoom, it's a special platform apparently that they're using. Um, but it's just for demonstrators and it's the first time they've um, ever done an event like this where there's no business talk, which is great because we have a lot of hobbyists who join us and they're people who join just to get a discount on their shopping um, and they don't want the, a lot of them don't want to listen to business talk so this should be absolutely fabulous for them if you want to know more about being a demonstrator please email me at jambi at jambi club say that again jambi at jambicards.com or if you already have a demonstrator you work with, have a word with them. Right, I fold these so they've got a straight line at the for their body to go on, so that I can put some Tombow on that. And put one down. And then this one. And then for the front, I've been using the bumblebees, these little trinkets. Oh, I should have opened this beforehand. This was bound to knock a nail. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. I thought you'd see a now um, false nail go pinging off somewhere then. one. I do like to use some glue dots and some a little dot of Tombow. Now I'm going to put one here. Just clear off the nozzle bit. Last thing I want is to have a lump there. a bit big. 
So where did I do the other one? Coming onto the leaf, wasn't it? Right, I think I will just lift a little bit of this up. In fact, have I got my tweezers somewhere? That's, that would be better. That's much, much better. Get it all back into a small little circle. And we take one. Okay, that's fine, don't mind you being there. There we go. So that's it, I think, isn't it? I think I've thought of everything. So I hope you like today's card. Hope you give it a try. Um, as I say, all the measurements will be in the box below. And let me just show you these two together now so that you can see whether you like the bigger blocks or the smaller blocks. I definitely prefer the bigger ones, no doubt about it. Um, anyway, many thanks for joining me today. Uh, all the measurements will be in the box below and um, there'll be inches for this because it's suitable for A4 cardstock users and letter size cardstock users. And I'll put the metric measurements. I'll also list out all the products that I've used for this. I'll put on my blog the products that I've used for this one as well. And largely the same. It's basically just the colours and the DSP that's different. Um, but I will put all the details down for you. And if the if you'd like to do any shopping with me, you don't have your own demonstrator that you work with. Many thanks. I appreciate your business. When you place your order, please remember to use the hostess code, the April hostess code. Um, that way, when I send you a happy mail at the end of the month, I can also send you free product. That applies as long as you don't put in a big order, which goes over £150 or €200. Euros. Okay, so many thanks for joining me today. Um, please give me a thumbs up, a like, leave a comment and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, it is growing and um, I'd like it to continue to grow. Many thanks. I uh, hope you've enjoyed today. Look forward to seeing you next week. Um, in the meantime, take care, stay safe and of course, happy crafting. Cheerio.